Hi everyone, my name is Wendy L. Curie and I am the founder of Wedded Wonderland and Creative Business Hub. I'm 38 weeks pregnant, which you may not be able to say, I might lean back a little bit. And I'm here to talk to you today about the importance of social media in the digital space and particularly in relation to weddings. So Sarah and Marcy are dear friends of mine and I follow them religiously online and we have met a number of times as well and uh, the conversation is always about the importance of social media. I uh, have been running Wedded Wonderland for about five years now and I guess quite early on recognized that the most dynamic way to speak to brides is through an online conversation um, and being able to touch base with them every single day. So the importance of social media in the wedding space and the impact that it's had on inquiries, the impact that it's had on building brands, on generating uh, new ideas in, in our space has been phenomenal over the past five years. And we have, oh, we're sitting at about 1.5 million followers now on social media across Facebook and Instagram. And we use those two platforms in particular because that's where the consumer is. So there's been a bit of conversation recently around uh, the relevance of Snapchat and that's something that unfortunately we're seeing a downward spiral in in terms of engagement and in terms of users um, and you know there are a series of other platforms out there that do work well in creating content and editing content in the wedding space um, and particularly for creatives however the platforms that we use to communicate and the platforms that we use to share content and engage with our followers is definitely Facebook and Instagram so what I want to talk to you today about, and uh, I hope that you all have Facebook and Instagram accounts. If you don't, please set them up and make sure they are set up as business accounts. Um, there has been conversation again, whether business accounts get less engagement than personal accounts. Um, we've tested this theory and haven't seen much of a difference. It really comes down to your content. If you have amazing content, if you are sharing regularly, if you're communicating and engaging with your audience, then they will come and um, they will recognize who you are as a brand, what you do, and, and hopefully fall in love um, uh, with you online and uh, follow through with an inquiry. And that's what we see with social media. If you have a bride who's inquired with you and has found your page through social, generally she's already quite familiar with your brand and has um, an idea of who you are and what you do. And really she's touching base to find out if you're available and also your price. Now the price factor in, um, in our space as well, particularly in the luxury market, these girls who are getting inspired by these you know, incredible weddings that we see around the world aren't really so price conscious. And I think when you're sharing ideas and you're sharing your vision and you are able to articulate that well through visuals and you know how to take a good photo um, or somebody in your team does, um, I think that it comes down to them actually falling in love with your product um, and you being able to sell your product visually. And so the price factor from a social media bride perspective um, isn't as much of a conversation because generally they will have an idea of where you sit um, in amongst your competitors and also have an idea of um, what they want. And if they see something they've fallen in love with, and we know brides are quite visual, they see something that they're, that's what I want, that's it, I don't care how much it costs, it has to be available and you know this is what I'm looking for, then the conversation really is about availability but then you know them actually liking you in person. They've obviously um, enjoyed your work online and now it's about them actually meeting you and uh, and following through with that inquiry and at the end of the day you know so many of us spend hours upon hours online and I think it's really important to understand that you need to be able to measure to um, understand where your leads are coming from and uh, and you want to see that your work is actually fruitful and uh, I've had people in the industry say oh social media I just don't know you know there's x amount of people that are on Instagram how am I going to find that girl that's for me um, she needs to find you and uh, and the way that uh, you communicate your product and who features you features are so important on um, through social media, particularly through Instagram with tags and people following on to other accounts. Uh, that's how she's going to find you, but she's going to find you if she, if she sees an image and falls in love with the content so or a video. So 
the importance of content creation is paramount in our space um, and the importance of having those connections through social media so you do get your work featured they're really two integral components of being successful um, through social and ensuring that you know you are creating an audience and a community for yourself and it's not about having 50,000 followers or 100,000 followers it really comes down to if your community is engaged and they're responding to what you're doing and um, and organically you're seeing those leads uh, generated through your Instagram and your Facebook then you're definitely doing something right um, businesses who we've worked with and have said oh we have not had a single inquiry um, through our Instagram page I um, will sit down with and have a look at their page and kind of when was the last time you posted? Oh, three weeks ago. And what, what time and what day did you post? Oh, I posted on a, I think it was a Tuesday. I think it's when I thought that I should just put something up. I mean, as we know as business owners and those who want to enter this space, if you don't have a strategy around something, then how are you going to measure? How are you going to define what you actually want to achieve? And how are you going to stick to it? So social media strategy is fundamental and setting up a strategy right so what have I got coming up now if you're brand new and you are thinking oh my goodness where am I going to create this content and how am I going to be able to work all of this out um, the easiest way is to start um, collaborating with people in the industry um, setting up your own photo shoots this is when you start calling upon some favors so um, you know uh, pulling together family friends a florist that you may want to work with a venue um, for example and actually saying you know we would love to come and shoot um, in your space and I have some really great ideas in how we can collaborate together as soon as you're creating content for someone else I mean you know not many people say no to content creation because everyone's looking for for things to share and things to do and people to work with so that's a really great way to tap into um, the industry if you are brand new and you've just started out um, definitely collaborate follow the right people online um, you know write meaningful comments don't just uh, like 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 likes get you nowhere um, you definitely need to be um, engaging if somebody has followed you and they're liking your work you know send them a message and say thank you um, I think it's so important that you realize that there's a human behind that and a lot of the times I think um, we get lost in this Instagram bubble we don't realize there's actually a person behind there commenting and um, and appreciating our work and why not um, uh, pay homage to that and actually respond and say well hey I just noticed that you started following me and I really love what you do and um, I really appreciate it and you know we'd love to catch up for a coffee um, only once you've seen them obviously engage with you and it goes both ways so how are people meant to find you if you're brand new and they've never heard of you and they have no idea who you are um, so definitely following and um, being genuine of course um, but engaging with the right accounts finding people in your local area um, that you can potentially work with and collaborate with um, is really really important and that's the starting point of creating content obviously sharing inspirational posts work well you know there's quotes there's other things that you can do um, but I always say at least 80% of what you share on your page really should be your work otherwise you will confuse the market in terms of what you actually do so I think it's important that um, you do pull some inspiration posts if you're a fashionista um, and you like your luxury brands there's nothing wrong with you know putting a couple of those in there if that's the kind of bride you want to attract um, images but I definitely think you know focus on creating your own content invest that time and um, take photos wherever you go even if you just go down to the flower market and you just think you know I'm just gonna start taking photos of the flowers that are in season and just speak to a couple of florists that's content and that could be your content for the week so it's and you could go visit the flower market every you know every month for example so little things like that will make such a big difference and will allow people to understand that you are dynamic that you care that you want to know what flowers are in season that you want to be able to talk about that online and um, and making those real life connections of social media is actually what's going to drive your business as well so you know sitting um, with your phone in your hand and, and liking and commenting all day every day is great but definitely getting out there creating your own content meeting people in the real world is actually 
what's going to drive your business otherwise you're just going to be living in a virtual bubble and none of us want that we want to um, be, be able to exist and be able to uh, share our passions with those um, who are like-minded in the industry and definitely push something through so I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between what is social and what is media and I spoke a little bit um, about this at Engage and I think that so many people forget that there are two components to social media so when we speak about being social if you were invited to an event and you knew that all the right people were in the room uh, you would make an effort to look the part you would have your business cards on you and you would network so you would go around and you would actually talk to people um, you definitely wouldn't stand in the corner or at least I hope not um, and if you are a little bit more shy then I guess it's about connecting with one person and saying oh can you introduce me to a couple of people tonight I mean that's a really great way um, to network a room but definitely um, you would make an effort and you would want to make an impression so it's the exact same thing with social media um, you need to socialize yourself people need to understand your personality online and so writing you know sharing an image and writing hashtag flowers hashtag planner tells me nothing about you so what are you sharing why are you sharing it how are you feeling today what's the inspiration behind this is there a bride that's asked you a question about this all of those things you need to be able to answer through the image and through the copy that you write so really important that you're socializing your your work and that you are actually um, jumping on other people's pages as I said and being social um, following the right people commenting engaging if people are commenting on your page you know you don't want to be um, appear as though you post and then you leave um, you've left the room so it's like you know having a conversation with somebody and then you know cutting it halfway and walking off you would you wouldn't do that you'd want to be able to follow through and um, grab their details and ask you know to connect with them and those kinds of things it's definitely the same thing if you see that people are engaging with your page if they're commenting you only you only need one comment to respond you know it always it just starts with one like where did one started with one follower um, and my relatives always remind me of the fact that they were the 13th and 14th and 15th because I made everyone I know follow Word of Wonderland online and so um, and that's how I socialized my brand. I told everyone they needed to follow us and we were going to be amazing and I had a vision and uh, that's definitely what you need to do as well. So when you're out and about and you're speaking to people um, you need to be able to talk about your brand in a meaningful way what your position is in the market and you need to encourage them to follow you online. If you want to stay connected, if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing um, you know here's our Instagram here's our Facebook make sure that it's on your business cards um, make sure that it's on your email signature it's really easy to find on your website these are all things that are really important because social media does not sit as a silo it's not independent of what you do it's actually um, the sounding board for everything that you do and I think you need to remember that so socializing your brand and building that community and having them understand your personality is super duper important because you want people to meet you and say, oh my goodness, I, you know, I love what you do. I think that you're fabulous and you're really funny or um, you're witty or you're really stylish. You know, they need to be able to comment on the personality of the brand and that's how they fall in love with you and what you do. The media component obviously is the content. So, and I'm really hard on this um, because I really do believe, um, I mean, we are in the creative industries. We are very visual people. And we definitely need to learn, um, which you know a lot of people in the industry have done and very well, um, how to communicate our product visually. Now, if you are working with photographers, briefing them in so you are actually getting photos um, for social media. So always think of photos for social in portrait rather than in landscape, because the larger the image, the more engagement you get. No um, low resolution images. Don't show anything that is cropped um, you know what people when they're engaging with an event with a bride um, they're looking for detail and they're looking for emotion so you need to captivate them with color or with an emotion so whether it's the first dance or the first kiss walking down the aisle um, you know the first time the father of the bride sees the bride all of these kinds of images is what people resonate with because they see themselves in um, the shoes of the person um, who's in the image so it's really important to remember that you want to be able to draw an emotion out of someone when you're sharing content 
and that way they comment and they like and they tag their friends you know so whether it's something funny or it's something sad or it's something um, uh, witty whatever the case may be it really is about engaging with your audience and not just sharing something for the sake of it and you know think about when what you engage with and what draws um, you on social and there's no right or wrong answer to this but the more engaged you are online the more receptive you will be to what good content looks like so I think spending a little bit of time on wedding sites on Instagram feel free to visit Wedded Wonderland um, and there are so many other fantastic pages um, such as Wedlux um, uh, there's the guys from uh, Bright Story, our friends in Indonesia, The Wedding Scoop, um, who are dear friends of ours from um, Singapore. You know, there are so many amazing um, Instagram pages who are really great in writing copy, really great in sharing images, and that's what they want to feature. So you need to think about, okay, well, if I share this, I want somebody to actually pick up this wedding or this event or this photo shoot and um, be inspired by it. So what's my point of difference? Um, and how can I convey that online? So the media part of things is the brain and the social part of things is the heartbeat. And if you remember those two things, then hopefully you'll be able to create a strategy that um, makes you know both work together in unison. And you definitely can't do one without the other. There are people in the industry again who say, look how fantastic my content is, you know, but I just don't get the engagement. And I say, well, you know, when was the last time you responded to your messages or the last time that you responded on your page? And the way that the Instagram algorithm works now is if you're not engaging, unfortunately, um, Instagram penalizes you and your content does not get seen. So you have to be engaging on your page. And with Facebook, I mean, Facebook tells you how quickly people respond to their inquiries and treat them as real inquiries. You know, just because it hasn't come through an email, it doesn't mean that it's not legitimate. I think there's a verification process that needs to take place on social. So, you know, if you're getting lots of messages about um, pricing, for example, or where are you located? Um, if somebody, if people are constantly saying, where are you based? Or do you work in this region? That needs to be in your bio because it's a repetitive question and you obviously don't answer it through the content that you share. Um, if people ask questions like, um, for example, uh, have you done an Indian wedding before? Um, or have you done cultural weddings before? Then clearly that's not something that you're conveying on your page and it's something that you need to focus on if that's the market you wanna tap into. Or you can easily say, no, that's not really my focus. My focus is, I don't know, destination weddings. Um, have done a couple of cultural weddings, but you know we really focus on destination, for example. So I think it's, um, which definitely can be both, but I think it's really important to establish what your niche is um, and make that really, really clear um, through the copy that you write on your Instagram page, the copy that you write on your Facebook page, so the description, um, and people are really understanding of where you're located, who you are, what market you um, service, and, uh, and that you're responsive. So you are commenting, you are, engaging with your audience and uh, and the best way to go back to messages on social is to say thank you so much for your inquiry um, can I please grab your name your contact details and uh, let me know the best time um, to touch base with you and that way the ones who are legitimate respond and the ones who aren't don't and that's completely fine so you're taking an active um, approach rather than a passive one um, I find that again we have a lot of suppliers who say oh my goodness I spend so much time just responding to pointless inquiries um, and my response is well don't go back to them and, and give them all of the answers and definitely take the conversation off social media into email so you have that email trail you can add that um, you can you know capture data capture the email address and add that to your database for example which is really important for new businesses who are just starting out um, that's one thing that we didn't do initially and it's something that I'll forever regret um, but you know thank goodness we've definitely got on top of our, our data um, the past few years a couple probably two or three years we focused on that but prior to that we had so many businesses contact us and we, we weren't thinking about data capturing and you as a new business owner for those who are new um, or those who've been around for 20 years if you receive five inquiries 
through Instagram a month, for example, and all of them are coming from a particular region, then that tells you um, that when you're setting up a Facebook advert, that you should focus on that region because clearly the brides in that area are responding to you. Uh, so data tells us a lot um, and it gives us a lot of in intel into who is inquiring with us and what they're responding to. If you're constantly getting inquiries, for example, for a destination wedding, um, then that should be your focal point. That should be key words that you're using. And if that's what you want to do, again, setting up an advert on Facebook that's focusing on the destination bride. So think about your audience and everything means something on social. I'm clearly obsessed with it a little bit, but it, every action um, it should have a reaction. And I think that you don't ever take it for granted um, and be really appreciative of the audience and the community that you build. And even if it is 300 people, um, as a starting point, like I said, those 300 people, if they were to share your work or if they were to engage with your page, could uh, multiply by 10 to 3,000 people within a matter of weeks. If you're sharing really great content, if you run a competition, for example, um, if you are selling the right product the right way, you know, it's not difficult to build an audience, but it's difficult to build a community. And what I want for small business owners is to focus on the community factor because if you could have 100,000 followers, and, and I know a few, um, that unfortunately don't generate um, much income or don't know how to you know, turn that into a business and, and focus on that. So following is fantastic, and you know we all like to feel a little bit popular on the playground, um, but it definitely um, is vital that your community knows who you are and appreciates you and what you do. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about social media goals and setting up social media goals. And um, the best way to go about it, um, I'll talk through all of them first, and I have touched on some of these points, so you'll find I jump around a little bit. Um, the first thing to do is to audit your account. So if you currently have accounts and you're thinking, I really wanna get serious about my business, I'm doing epic, these ladies are amazing, I'm charged up, um, have a look at your online footprint. Who are you and what you do? I mean, there's not a single person that comes through outdoors that I interview that I haven't already stalked a little bit online. And, uh, and I'm trying to create an image in my head of who they are um, and uh, what their interests are. So I think it's really important for you to audit your accounts. If you have really personal photos up there, definitely take them down. Um, if it does not, it's not a reflection of where you want to be, always think about where you want to be as opposed to where you are right now because that's the image you want to build online. Um, definitely, you know, low resolution images, um, anything that doesn't make sense brand wise, anything that has a black border on it, for example, just remove it all. Set goals. So setting goals again and realistic goals, of course. Um, I'm never realistic really, um, but I drive my team insane. Um, but for me, I always really want to aim high and I think when you're so passionate about what you do, it's hard not to. However, when it comes to social, again, if you're receiving two inquiries a month, the goal for next month should be five, five inquiries and the goal for the month after should be eight inquiries, for example. And then how do you go about achieving that? Do you collaborate? Um, do you physically go out and meet people in the industry? Um, do you run an online promotion? Think about what you're going to do. You just can't sit around and kind of go, let me just continue um, you know, sharing images and hope that somebody likes my work. You know, Einstein says the definition of madness is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So definitely set goals, change it up, have a look at how other people do it. Find people who are like-minded. I'm sure that there are some fabulous people doing this, um, uh, this course who are starting out or, you know, maybe in a similar position to you and have a chat about how you can potentially work together. Social media management, so definitely don't just post and walk away from your page. Um, think about it as a, well, I'm not going to say black hole because that's a bit doom and gloom, but it definitely is you diving in to a pool and you actually don't know how deep it is. Um, and I think that uh, when you are managing something, um, that uh, think, of, <laughs> think of a pool where it just gets deeper and deeper um, but you actually don't know how deep it gets. Um, that's what social media management's really all about because the further in you get, the more time you want to give it, the more time you want to invest and the more you get out of it and the stronger you will get as a swimmer 
um, to be able to, you know, uh, continue down that path. But it definitely is challenging, and um, and it's a mindset as well. So you need to dedicate time to manage your pages. Um, you need to be committed to. Um, an outcome and driving an outcome for yourself build your content calendar and rules so this is one that I live by um, and reason being is I don't I feel like when you do things randomly again that you know you're going to get a random response so building a content calendar so okay how many times can I realistically post a week um, and what are the peak times so when we think of peak times in the wedding space, we generally say that Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday evenings are peak times. However, that does change um, with certain accounts. So it's really important, again, that you set up as a business page, you go into your insights and you find out what days and what times you should be posting. Some businesses work really well early mornings and then some generate um, a better response of an evening. But definitely mornings, evenings, um, and then Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays, I would test out and see which works best for you. Um, I would say posting at least three to five times a week, otherwise you're really not going to get anywhere, um, is really important. And then variety. So if you're going to share a wedding that you've worked on or a photo shoot, definitely don't share the same floral arrangement from five different angles. Um, you know, you can talk about the inspiration of the photo shoot, um, the uh, florals uh, before they've actually been turned into an arrangement and then what the arrangement looks like and then that on a tablescape for example and then the entire thing so tell a story through the content that you share again don't allow it to be random try and have the images work well together um, and sit side by side quite nicely try and have the color palette um, you know don't share something blue and then something pink and then something red and then something black and white on your page because it's a very random and it's also not appealing to the eye. And remember when somebody comes across to see your work, the first thing, they, they will make a judgment call in three seconds. So you want your page to look really pretty. So try and storyboard that through your content calendar. Competitor analysis. So this is one that I think um, is really important, but definitely a, we don't like to look at um, competitors in our own backyard um, from a inspirational perspective because somehow subconsciously their ideas become our ideas and our ideas become their ideas and everyone starts to look the same. Um, I think it's important to have a look at the data and the analytics and, and kind of have a look, okay, well, my competitors have more followers than me. They seem to have more engagement. What is that that they're doing that I'm not? Um, but definitely from a, an inspiration source and from a, okay, a visionary perspective, look internationally because you will find people all around the world and it, it's amazing how you know I've got um, Marcy and Sarah as, as friends and uh, and we've connected through social media and, and so many people that we've worked with um, that we've been able to establish relationships as a result of our activity on social media I think it's important to be inspired by those internationally have a look at their work and and um, kind of you know say okay this is who I want to look like this is what I want to do but you know make sure that it's not somebody who is um, close to you in proximity because it, it can start to look a little bit similar and that's where we get lost as an industry. Uh, use the right platform. So I know Twitter is actually, I'm just gonna have a sip of my coffee, a latte. Mummy needs coffee. Um, so I, I know Twitter is quite big in, in the UK um, and I've heard that it works well for the wedding space. However, I will encourage you very, very strongly um, to understand and to be somewhat assured that wherever you are communicating visually in the wedding space will always work better than where you are um, communicating um, verbally, orally. That's the right terminology. Um, Instagram is definitely where it's at uh, in decision making for brides and, um, and in sourcing suppliers. So that's where you're going to find you can build a brand and you can build influence. Um, Facebook for local businesses generally is quite good at generating leads. And um, I would say, you know, if you want to invest in that, that you need to have at least a $20 a day budget um, and, uh, and measure the conversions and see if anything's actually, you know, happening. There are so many YouTube channels that talk about how to advertise on Facebook. It's changing all the time, but definitely jump on YouTube, do the search, um, you know, build a couple of different ads and see what works best for you. And the only way you're going to know is by trying. K 
Keep your following engaged. So yes, definitely don't go quiet on them. Don't ghost your followers. Um, make sure that you're coming up with something new and exciting. And if there's nothing in the pipeline, then create it. Um, and so my last point is refine and measure. So how do you know that you're performing if you don't actually measure your performance? Again, um, use your family and friends, get them to have a look at your pages and ask the question, do you like what I do? Does it look like what I actually do? Um, would you follow my page? Is there anything that you would change? I mean, you need to use the resources that you have. And I definitely think that, you know, those who know you and know where your passions lie um, will be quite critical, which isn't a bad thing, about um, what you look like online because perception is everything. So if you're not seeing that growth, um, if, well, firstly, you need to be measuring your growth. Um, measuring your leads but if you kind of feel like you're not getting anywhere you definitely need to change the game and you need to refine as you go so if there's a certain post that did really really well and you think oh my goodness that just got so many likes and engagement and then I got like two inquiries from it and I really feel like that worked really well for my business and, it, and that was a post that went up on Instagram I would take that post and share it on Facebook and create an advert around it because clearly your audience responded to it and then I would try and replicate that so if it was you know, a photo of flower girls walking down the aisle, for example, then I would say the next photographer you're working with, please get that shot for me. My audience loves flower girls. I don't know what it is, but you know, it's something that they really resonated with. And I really want to make sure that's part of my portfolio. Um, keep your photos, uh, credit photographers, so important um, to give credit where credit's due and, uh, and follow the people that you work with. That's really important. Um, and the people that you want to work with even more so, but again, setting those goals and following that all the way through to refine and measure is definitely going to allow you to understand and validate your time and the importance of what you want to achieve through social media so i hope my tips were helpful and um i'm so sorry <coughs> i'm so sorry that i couldn't go live i'm really worried that i'm actually going to have a baby this week so i thought let me pre-record it so i can definitely get this message across to you all i hope to meet you soon enjoyed this uh, amazing experience um, with my dear friends and uh, feel free to follow creative business hub that's where we share a lot of our tips and tricks online i do a live and hopefully we'll be back probably in june um, back online uh, sharing some uh, fantastic videos we will have an online course coming up soon as well um, and uh, and you know creative business hub is where a lot of people in the industry are really get to understand what trends are breaking and what's happening so follow us there if you don't already follow us on wedded wonderland please do we would love to see your work so hashtag wedded wonderland if you have something incredible coming up that you feel like is relevant to our audience let us know um, submissions at weddedwonderland.com we love to celebrate work globally and um, love to connect with all sorts of businesses and remember we all started somewhere and i think it's so important that if you do good work and you are passionate and you know how to um, present that online that you definitely are 10 steps ahead already so um, thank you so much for having me wendy or curry and um, wish me luck with the baby and uh, hope to see you all soon bye for now